understanding. So now, there are only six of us. found our way to this farm. Now all we have to do is rebuild society. How's it coming? I can't fix it. I don't know why you people think I know everything because I'm a pathologist. I mean, give me a dead body. Then I can get my hands dirty. That's true. I haven't missed it. Well, it hasn't been a strain on me. Guys, you guys, I don't know if I can do another acre. When's that tractor going to be ready? Well, we were just discussing that. We came to the conclusion we don't really need it. We don't really need it? Well, while you were having your discussion, I was out plowing and a hillside collapsed on me. And I suppose now you're going to want Frederick, the pathologist, to examine you. When does it ever end? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just a bit parched from all the dirt I swallowed while nearly being buried alive. Where's Suzanne? Isn't it her job to be here with the lemonade? I believe she's sleeping in. Sleeping in? Now, don't you start in on Suzanne just because of that buried alive business. Yeah. Suzanne had a mishap of her own yesterday. She got some lemon juice in a paper cut. Oh. <laughs> There's our brave little soldier. <laughs> How's Mr. Pointer today? Oh, I don't know. And it's my dialing finger, too. <laughs> Lucky for me, everyone's dead, or they think I was real rude. <laughs> well, I insist that you let me examine that at your earliest convenience. <laughs> well, maybe after I make the lemonade. <laughs> what, and have a repeat of last night's carnage? I think not. <laughs> Alice will handle the lemonade. Excuse me. Now, I want to do my fair share here, but I can't help but notice that the division of labor among the women of this group is not completely equitable. My stars, have you always had that ankle bracelet? Of course she has. <laughs> Yesterday it was on the other ankle. <laughs> oh, is that new? Oh, this is a crystal. I found it while I was out in the field, plowing. <laughs> You know, I can almost feel the positive energy. Mm. Well, it looks like, miss, I hate my job. I has plenty of time to root around in the dirt for jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody, great news. There's civilization just beyond the ridge. No, our melon crop is ripe. <laughs> Do you know what this means? We can make melon balls and serve them on little toothpicks. That's not great news! Oh, no. <laughs> this is great news. The first harvest of our new world. Oh, we should have a celebration, a festival in honor of nature's bounty. I may be a little late to that. I'll check I'm my book. <laughs> I think a festival is a good idea. And just because Alice suggested it doesn't mean it has to be boring. <laughs> festival sounds like fun. Oh! We could have one of those dunking booths. I'd sit in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Suzanne, I think we can find a better way to celebrate our harvest than with a cheap carnival game that exploits the female form. You know, lady, you got a lot to learn about showmanship. <laughs> good morning. What the hell's good about it? What's his problem? Alice hasn't come down yet. There isn't any coffee. Maybe Suzanne knows how to make it. Well, when she gets up in another seven hours, we can ask her. Well, it looks like it's time for Sweet Jack to whip up a pot of java. <laughs> Relax. When I was living on the street, I learned how to make coffee from one of the best. Crazy Spiro. He used to be the head chef at the Athens Diner. Well, that is, at least until the unfortunate rat poison baklava incident. <laughs> Anyway, you give that guy a skillet and a full dumpster, 
He'd whip up something so delicious, you'd swear yours was the first plate it had been on. I'll go get Alice. They say they found all his customers like this. Is everything all right? Just fine. Run along, please. You sure? Yeah. Okay. If you feel like talking, I'll be downstairs. Oh, Mark, wait. There's something I have to show you. What? It's the breasts, isn't it? Mark, I think it was this damn crystal. Somehow, it caused my breasts to change. Mark, this is why you should only buy from a reputable jeweler. This damn thing. Alice, I think we should have Frederick check you out. No, I've checked myself out, thank you, and I'm fine. That's not the problem. I don't know how I can face the rest of them. I mean, imagine the reaction when they see me like this. I... <laughs> the leers, the cat calls. It'll be just like when I was 20 all over again. Well, that one time. <laughs> walking in front of that prison. <laughs> oh, Mark, what am I going to do? Huh? Mark, you've helped me realize that I can never leave this room again. Sorry. Look, just don't tell the others. Maybe a hug would help. Get out. <laughs> Where's Alice? I'm afraid she's not feeling well, and she won't be coming down this morning. What's wrong with her? It's a gland thing. Morning. Alice, you seem all better. Well, let's just say I have the symptoms tightly under wraps. <laughs> I'll make some coffee. And we'll drink it. <laughs> Pass the sugar. That's bad for you. The world's destroyed. I care about a cavity. So, oh, Alice, you're not looking very well. Why don't I help you upstairs? <laughs> hey, woman, where's my coffee? Woman, just exactly where do you get off? All right, all right. Alice had an unfortunate reaction to the crystal she was wearing. She's okay, but she is very sensitive about what happened. And I think the least we can do is treat her with a little dignity, respect, and understanding. Hello! the day hadn't been strange enough, it was about to take yet another bizarre turn. I could only stand back and watch it unfold. Well, I seriously considered staying in my room all day, but I refused to allow your behavior to dictate how I conduct my life. This is a new world, damn it, and I demand to be treated with the respect normally reserved for women in the A to B cup range. <laughs> Alice, 
I believe I speak for all the men when I say we sincerely regret our swinish behavior earlier this morning. We deeply regret any pain we may have caused you. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you all. Whoa, Missy, what do you think you're doing? Plowing, as usual. Good God, woman, you're not a beast of burden. Someone else will do the plowing. Really? Yeah. Well, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Thanks all around. <laughs> <laughs> Lemonade, Freddie. <laughs> Frederick? Uh, Alice, would you do the honors of serving the lemonade today? I thought that was my job. Hey, Alice, it's stacked. <laughs> Something for you to ponder while you're plowing. <laughs> Okay, the men's behavior was weird, but ultimately understandable. It was Alice's response to it that really threw me for a loop. Well, I guess while you're all out working, I'll be here waiting for you. <laughs> you can just think of me as your... <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> And she continued to love it. I'll get the door. No, I'll get it. I'll get it. Alice. Thank you, sir. I'll get a chair. I'll get it. No, I'll get it. I've got the door. I proved myself with the door. I think I've earned the chair. It's gonna be okay. Those first couple of acres are always the toughest. Uh, hi, guys. Not now. We're talking to Alice. Oh. Well, I was just gonna say... Must you monopolize the conversation? <laughs> but I, I didn't... Hush up, you magpies. <laughs> Why can't you find some other way to amuse yourself? Like what? Ooh. Encyclopedia. Oh, I've heard of these. <laughs> Volume Ab. Mm, no, 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 that's A to B. Oh. <laughs> that's a pretty lousy way to treat Suzanne. Yeah, but Alice is about to show us something really fascinating. Yeah, go on. Here is the church, and here is the steeple. Open the door and see all the people. <laughs> I'm not a religious man, but that was moving. <laughs> Hey, man, I actually thought I saw people there. I did. <laughs> well... Oh, the parishioners. <laughs> you boys know what I feel like right now. No, but we have some working theories. <laughs> I was referring to a nice hot bubble bath. I'm going to draw the water. No, Ben, you've got the door. We really should keep a chart. <laughs> Alice, Alice, wait. Can I talk to you a second? Mark, could you make it quick? The fellows are waiting. You know what all this attention and flattery is about. They like me. <laughs> and you know why they like you. Good personality? Fun to be with? No. My way with a quip? Alice, wake up and smell your breasts. <laughs> what? Alice, come on. Oh, okay. Maybe there is something to what you say, but if there is, what's so terrible about it? I just can't believe that you of all people would want to be turned into a sex object. You have built your whole life on the idea that women should be treated on the basis of who they are, not how they look. I was wrong, live and learn. Alice! <laughs> look, for as long as I can remember, men have always responded to the Suzannes of the world. Well... The bra is on the other bust now, Pally. <laughs> and I am going to milk it for all it's worth. Over the next few days, Alice's behavior became even bigger, broader, and more cartoonish. Not unlike her profile. Hi, everybody! 
How's the canning going? We're almost done. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. Oh, I have an idea! And we like it! <laughs> Phillies, I haven't even told you what it is yet. Now, I think that we should hold our harvest festival tomorrow night, and it should culminate in... Hold on to your heads. A beauty pageant. <laughs> Come on, people, you can't be serious. Mark's right. A beauty pageant is demeaning. At least I think that's what Anthony Susan B., 1820 to 1906, crusader for women's rights, would have said. Oh. Woof. <laughs> Susan B. for Bow Wow Anthony. You can find her cross-referenced under depilatory, needing awe. <laughs> Despite my reservations, I decided to attend the pageant. If Alice was going to fall from grace, I wanted to be there. If not to catch her, then at least to take a peek down her blouse as she plummeted. Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Bard, Carter, Reagan... Bush! Hey! 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 Alice McConnell with a moving tribute to our two-party system. <laughs> now, continuing with the talent portion of our competition, our next contestant, Miss Suzanne Skillman. <clears throat> Bolivians. They have more in common than you'd imagine. <laughs> Anteaters dislike water, while Bolivia is a landlocked country. Anteaters prefer not to. <laughs> Anteaters scurry around in the underbrush, while Bolivians in the city La Paz travel in a modern transportation system. Alice, what's the idea of... <laughs> the crystal must have worn off. Mark, you have to stall them while I go look for it, okay? Alice, I know you're upset, but I really think this is for the best. Mark, don't you understand? For the first time in my life, men are waiting to see me, counting the moments to see me. I'm going to be a beauty queen, and you have to help me. Alice, I understand what you're feeling. Look, I know the men didn't pay a lot of attention to you before. Maybe they even found you a little annoying. Okay? A lot annoying. <laughs> they hated me. Fair enough. <laughs> but don't you see? It was you they hated. What I'm saying is they were relating to you as a person. Right now, you mean no more to those men than a, a piece of meat to a pack of hungry wolves. Melons. <laughs> melons. <gasps> no wonder they call them melons. What? <laughs> and so you see, anteaters and Bolivians are brothers and sisters under the skin. Or fur. Well, there goes Miss Congeniality, if you know what I mean. Now comes that portion of the contest we've all been waiting for, the swimsuit competition. Yeah! Unfortunately, we don't have any swimsuits. Oh. Not to worry. The girls have promised to duplicate the spirit of the swimsuit competition by showing as much skin as possible. Yeah. Now, first up is a special lady, someone who can heat up any nuclear winner, Miss Alice McConnell. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I, I think we've seen enough. Of course, we could never see enough. <laughs> but I think we can save our other contestants some needless embarrassment and declare a winner. I present you with Alice McConnell, our Melon Queen! <laughs> I 
can't do this. Mark was right. I'm nothing more than a piece of meat to a pack of hungry wolves. I can't believe that I wanted this so much that I was willing to do this to get it. She's back to her old self. Bill! I'm ashamed of myself. But then you share my shame. Because too often what you men prize most in us women is physical beauty, and we respond to it. We're human. We want to be noticed. But why can't you admire us for our thoughts and our ideas? We've seen a glimpse of what Suzanne might have become if she'd been given the slightest encouragement. And another 24 letters. <laughs> but that's the beauty of the end of humanity. We can start again. Let this be our challenge. That we not judge ourselves by what's stuffed inside our shirts, but by what's stuffed inside our hearts. Wow! Wow! Moving words. From our first runner-up. And now I present you our new melon queen, Miss Suzanne Skillman! Yay! In a way, we had harvested more than just melons this past week. We had harvested a better understanding of our behavior towards the women among us. Hey, Mark, I found that crystal out in the field. Got it right here in my pocket. Oh, my God. <laughs> 